Samuel 1, except 1 Samuel 15, 1 to 4, and then we jump to verses, uh, uh, let's do, okay, uh, 17 to 23. Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, hear the voice of the words of the Lord. Thou sayest the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel. How he ambushed him on the way when he came out from Egypt. Verse 3. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Verse 4. So Samuel gathered Saul. So Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Tele, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. From verse 17. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go oh, and utterly destroy the sinners and the Amalekites and fight against them until they are consumed. 19. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you sit down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? 20. And Saul so said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission of whom the Lord sent me and brought back Agar, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took up the plunder, sheep, and all things. And the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. 22. So Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed. And the fact of rams. 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the Lord, the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So when we look at 1 Samuel 15, we see that God instructing Prophet Samuel and saying, you know, tell the king, Saul, verse 4, go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all, he didn't say, he says all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And uh, sometimes people in this uh, modern world will say, oh, that's terrible that to do such a thing and all of that. But here was, there was a purpose. God had a purpose. If God says, go, and destroy all. What did Prophet uh, Samuel uh, ask him when he saw him? Huh? Verse 17, And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy, you know, the sinners. You see the word there, the sinners, the Amalekites, 
and fight against them until they are consumed. This, wherefore, then, this thou not obey the voice of the Lord. You see, that is what is going on uh, with us. Anytime we disobey, anytime we say that, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm going to do what I want. You know, verse 23. Of course, look at uh, verse 22. Uh, what was uh, uh, Saul doing? He, was, he did sacrifice. He did all the, some of the things, you know, but it was not exactly what God wanted him to do. God says we should remain faithful to him and we are contaminating ourselves with some things, with uh, rituals, uh, with celebrations, with this and that. God says don't. Come out of them and we want to remain with them. We want to attach ourselves to them. We want to uh, get a hook that when they are doing it, oh, we uh, just, uh, I, will just, I will just remain a little bit someone. You know, where I'm going to, uh, you know, they are doing it, but even though I know I'm not going to do the same thing, I'm just going to hang around them. Someone says, no, uh, you don't uh, go and hang around them. You don't sit. You don't even linger. You don't even uh, want a secondhand, uh, uh, well, uh, association. You cut off. So what happened? Uh, the... He said, oh, well, I did for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Sometimes we don't want to hear that word. You know, we think it's, uh, it's, it's only people who, uh, you know, they have this thing in Africa. They, they kill a goat. They, they, they put an egg. They put an oil and they, they do all those things. And they said, oh, what do you doing? They do all, and they say all those things. And then we say, oh, you know, we have to be. Uh, able to separate ourselves. In the time of uh, Father, uh, well, no, let's 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 use a uh, Prophet uh, uh, Moses. We know what happened to Korah and Abiram, and uh, you know uh, what happened to them. Let's even forget that. Uh, you know, the, after they were destroyed, the earth opened and they were destroyed. We realized that there was nothing like. Uh, disobedience. Everybody followed. And uh, there was one time when, you know, they said, uh, don't go and mix uh, with the, uh, you know, the people and all of that. And uh, one of them said, oh, I found a woman. I'm going to bring uh, the woman. Uh, I love the woman. She's uh, my friend. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, it's brought the woman in the camp. And uh, where God has said, don't contaminate yourself. So, oh, well, uh, she's very smart. She's this, she's that. And uh, I love her and this and that. She's ungodly. She say, she, you know, and sometimes we say, oh, well, uh, she goes to a different church. And, and this church is, it's all right. You know, they, they also pray. They also do this. And uh, sometimes we say, oh, well, so we think that uh, those other Christians uh, won't go to heaven. You know? Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. All right. So we see that there is a distinction. There must be a separation. If the separation is not there, then we are going to be hindering our progress. So you want to? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let's bring your chair. William, uh, bring that chair in, please. Okay. Okay. 